What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment. Now let's start off by talking about the model number on this XUV 835E. So on the model number here, first thing we're gonna see is XUV. This is gonna stand for Crossover Utility Vehicle. Then when we move down here to our digits, this is gonna be broken up into two parts. The first one is going to be the size indicator of the Gator itself. So on these, the eight means that this is a full size gator. You could also see maybe fives and sixes, which could mean that these are mid-sized gators or work vehicles. Now, the 35 here is gonna indicate that this is a gas model. We could also have a 65 here, which would indicate that it is a diesel. And then the last letter here is going to be our trim level indicator. So this is gonna be the same as it is on a lot of different John Deere equipment. This is gonna either have an E, an M, or an R. E is gonna be your economy or base model. M is going to be your mid-spec model, and then R is going to be your loaded out model with the most features and accessories. Now, being that this is an E trim level machine, let's talk about some of the things that make this an E trim level machine. For one, starting here at the front, you'll notice that we do not have any type of protection package, no front bumper, no side fender guards here, and that is going to be the case whenever we order these from the factory. They do not come with that option to add the front protection here. Now, also another thing is that you are only able to get the E trim level 835s in the classic John Deere green and yellow. And another big part to the E trim level is that you will not have power steering as an option on this machine until you move up to the M trim level. And then one of the other things is going to be back at the back in the bed. What you'll notice is that there are no tail lights installed in this machine and then there also is no spray in bed liner. That is also going to be a feature that you jump up to whenever you move to the M trim level. Now at the front of the machine, you are still going to have standard headlights here. They are going to be single beam headlights and you do have the option to add those things such as that front protection and those bumpers here around the front. Now you are still going to have access to the underside of your hood here where we have one pull tab on each side where we can pull open the hood of this machine. And once we get this open, not much here on the E trim level, you'll see a big wide open space here. This is going to be where an HVAC system could be put. This is more going to be for your M trim level models. If you're going to add that air conditioning and heating unit, you have that here. But what you do have underneath the hood here is you are going to have your radiator cap. These are going to be liquid cooled machines. So you do have your radiator cap here for that. And then also over here on the driver's side, we're going to have our fuse panel up here on top. And then right below that, we'll also have our brake fluid reservoir right here. Now, another thing about the E-Series is that you are gonna have only one rim option on this machine, and that is going to be the steel wheels. But with this option, you're still going to have the ability to get all three tire options. What we have here is going to be the Terra Hawk all-terrain tires. You can also get the Predator extreme terrain tires and the Maxi's Bighorn tires, depending on your preference and where you're going to use this machine. Now, also on the E-Series, they are going to come standard here with the net doors. This is gonna be a standard feature on all of the large frame gators. So if you are looking into one of these machines and wanting to add such things as cab doors, half doors, those could be added to this machine, but it is all going to have to be after delivery from the factory. Now that we're over here on the left-hand side of the machine or the passenger side of the machine, there are gonna be two service points that we need to take note of. One is going to be our air filter right here. So this is located right behind the passenger seat. We're gonna have this orange tab that we can simply pull out on. Once we pull out on that, we can twist that cap, take it off, and then we're able to access our air filter, be able to remove that and replace it. Very, very easy to get to there. But then also while we're over here, another point that we need to know is that this panel right here, so we can see this button just right below our air filter housing. We can simply push that in, push out on this lower panel. And this is where actually our battery is and then also our charging point if we need to charge this battery. Now moving to the bed of the machine, here is where we can see those reflectors that I was talking about in the beginning. Now on an M series or R series machine, you would have taillights here at the rear, but on the E, since it is your base model machine, there are only the rear reflectors. And then here actually in the bed, on the floor of the bed here, we can see this is only a painted surface. It does not have that rough spray in bed liner. But as far as your bed dimensions go, you are going to be 52 inches wide by 45 inches long and 12 inches deep. 
You're also going to have a cargo capacity of a thousand pounds in this bed. You're going to have the single hand opening tailgate here. So you do have that pickup style tailgate where we only have to use the one hand to open that very nice feature. You're also going to have a nice little feature here of a ruler here on this bed. So maybe you're that fisherman, maybe you're cutting firewood, need to get those links. You have that right here on the bed, which is pretty handy. And then also it is very easy to take this tailgate off and also take the sides of this bed off if you happen to need to turn this machine into a flatbed. Now, if we do have those sides on and we're hauling that cargo, we're also gonna have plenty of tie down points as we are going to have these bed rails here on the side, as well as tie downs here in each corner of the bed as well, along with a couple of holes there at the front of the bed that are also going to work well for tie downs if you have those large loads here in the back. Now, if we move down here below the bed, looking at the rear of the machine, we're also going to have a two inch receiver on this machine. So that way, if we need to add on that ball hitch to be able to pull around that trailer, you have that as well. You're going to have a towing capacity of 4,000 pounds. So if you're adding on that small trailer, needing to haul those loads, you have plenty of capability with this machine. Now, beside that two inch receiver, we're also gonna have a couple of holes there for our tow chains. So with that trailer, needing to hook it up, you have those tow chains in case you lose that off of your ball as well. And then if we look to either side of our receiver hitch here, we can also see the dual independent suspension on either side. These are going to have dual A arms, as you can see right here, making for a very smooth ride on this machine. Now, the bed on this machine does dump as well. You're going to have a handle over here on the driver's side with a pull lever that you simply have to pull out on, and then this machine will raise up. It's actually going to be on a gas shock system. So once you raise this up, you do have that full dump mechanism for your bed. And then you're also going to have access to your engine. Now this is going to be a three cylinder gas engine that is electronically fuel injected. And a couple of the service points here, we are going to have our oil fill right here on top. And then our dipstick is going to be over there on the passenger side as well. Now this is going to be a 54 horsepower engine that's going to produce a top speed of right around 45 mile an hour. Now over here on the driver's side, before we hop in, right behind the driver's seat here is going to be our fuel tank. It is going to have that tethered lid. This is going to be an 11.2 gallon fuel tank. So you'll have plenty of fuel to be able to do the jobs that you need to do and hopefully more with that type of fuel capacity. Now, what type of seat you're gonna see here is going to be the black vinyl split bench seat. This is going to be called a 60-40 split bench seat. So we do have a driver's seat here that is independent from the other bench seat, but this is going to be a true three-seater machine. And as you can see, we have a seat belt on the driver's side, one in the middle and then one on the far side. That, that way you are safe to have those three passengers on board. Now, once I get in this machine, first thing that I point out is plenty of foot room here. So I wear a size 11 shoe, have no problem at all getting my feet in and out of this machine. You're also going to have the adjustable seat here. So if you are a shorter operator, you can scoot closer to the steering wheel. Or if you're the larger operator like myself, you have plenty of room here between yourself and the steering wheel. Now, another nice comfort feature on this machine that is going to come standard is you do have the tilt steering wheel. So right here, if you need to adjust that very easy with this lever right here below the steering wheel. Now, as far as controls in this machine, very, very few being as that this is the base model. So starting over here to my left, the only switch that we're going to have is going to be our light switch here. It's going to be a simple on and off switch. And then we're also going to have some other pop outs here to be able to add other attachments to this machine, maybe other lights, turn signals, different things like that. You do have the pop outs in this machine to be able to add those things. Then right above our steering wheel here, we are going to have one cup holder right here in front. Then if we move over here to our right, we are going to have our key switch. And then once we turn that on, we can see here this very beautiful bright display. This is one really nice thing about these gators is that the display is so bright. And then you're also going to be able to change that brightness right here on the dash. So as you can see, going through those different brightnesses, whether you have glare really beaming in sun, you're still going to be able to see this. Now, right below that brightness button, we are gonna have an information button. So as we can see right now, we're showing 
showing the odometer. If we hit that information button, we can go into the trip. We can also go into engine hours and then back to our odometer. Now, a few other things that we're gonna see here on the display, right over here, we're going to have our RPMs. Then we're going to have our speedometer here in the middle. Over to the right, we're going to have our engine temperature, also our fuel gauge, which is displayed right here on the front display, which is nice. And then over here to the left bottom corner, this is going to show where our four wheel drive engagement is and also our differential lock. So on the screen here, as we can see, we only have the rear wheels highlighted. Now, if we wanted to engage our four wheel drive, we have a switch over here to the right of the steering wheel right here. This is going to be our four wheel and drive engagement switch here for four wheel drive. So if we turn that on, now we can see that both sets of our wheels there are lit up. Now, if we wanted to engage our differential lock in the rear to lock in those rear wheels, make sure everything's pulling at the same speed, helping us to get out of those sticky situations, we can go right here to this switch turn it on and then now we can see that we have the lock in between our rear wheels right down here so i'm going to go ahead and turn those back off and we can see there that those are both going to go away now right here in the middle underneath our speedometer this is going to show our different gears so i'll go ahead and turn the machine on and right now we are in park and then we have a gear shifter right over here to the right of those four wheel drive and differential lock switches this is going to be where our park mechanism is that we are in right now. You will not have a parking brake on this machine unless you decided to add it later just for that extra safety. Then we can go up by pushing on our brake here. We're gonna go from park up to reverse, one more into neutral, one more into high, and then we can go over and up and go into low. Now, once we move over to the right of our gear shift on this E model, there is not going to be much more as far as controls goes. You're going to have three storage bins here. This is where once we moved up into the M or R series, we may have such things as a radio or our HVAC controls and other types of controls here. Then to the right of that, we're going to have a large bank of pop outs again here. This is going to be for additional attachments if we were to add those to this machine you have all of these pop outs and then all the way over to our right we are going to have our glove box here that opens up that way you can store whatever things you need to on board there and then right above that you're going to have a set of three cup holders there right on top of your glove box compartment now also in this machine under your passenger seat this is able to flip up where you have a huge storage compartment here as well sometimes this is where you will find your operator manual either here or in the glove box whenever you are looking into these machines make sure to check that to make sure that you have that operator manual on board now this machine here does come with a roof installed on this model but from the factory this is going to be an open station cab so if the roof is something that you want to add you have to make sure and tell that to your salesman or whoever you're buying this machine from to make sure that you get that roof because it is going to be an add-on now one important thing is right here to the left of our gear shift in between our four wheel drive engage button and our differential lock button. You're going to see a pop out here that has a little tab here cut down in the bottom, a little groove. And what this is going to be for is if we happen to get this machine in a situation where we need to get it pushed out of the way, but we cannot get our gear shift to move because we cannot start the machine, you can override that by popping out this little switch cover here. And there is a knob right in here that we just need to pull up. Once we pull up on that, we can shift our gear shift up into neutral in case we have those issues where we can't start this machine and we need to get it pushed out of the way or towed out of the way. That way we're not dragging this machine with that transmission still engaged. Now let's talk a little bit about dimensions. So whenever we are looking into one of these machines, we know just how much space we're gonna need to be able to store it. So as far as width goes at the widest point, we're gonna be 64 inches wide. We're going to be 127 inches long and 78 inches tall. And then whenever we're looking at ground clearance, if you're taking this machine through some rugged terrain, you are going to have 11.2 inches of ground clearance from the lowest point to the ground. Now, we'll go ahead and hop in this machine, let you hear how it sounds. Also keep in mind that this machine, the weight of it with all of the fluids is going to be right around 1,900 pounds. So we'll go ahead and start this machine up again. Now, we'll just leave it in park here. This is going to be at the low idle. This right here is at about 4,200 RPMs. So very, very smooth. 
not super loud. Very easy to go ahead and switch gears here, going in reverse, going up into our high gear or our driving gear. Very, very nice, very, very smooth on this machine. Now, as far as price goes, these machines starting out bare bones are going to be around the $17,000 mark. Now, I tell everybody that if you're looking into these machines, make sure and go talk to your local dealership. That way you can make sure that you are getting any type of discounts that may apply or any type of incentives that may be going on. And also so that you can talk about finance options if that's something that works for you. Now, also on these machines, warranty is huge. What these machines are gonna come with is a one year 1000 hour warranty whichever comes first but you can also look into adding extended warranty options to these machines so the xuv 835e is going to be a great work machine not a lot of bells and whistles but still is going to have the power and the capacity to get those jobs done around your operation so guys i hope this video helped you out i hope that you liked this video if you did we just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel also guys if you are needing any parts at all make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com and as always guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time hey guys make sure to check out this cool video and this one buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here